Okay, so having had a tour of the P5JS editor, let's finally write some code. Um, as our first program, we're going to follow on the history of many, many, many people who have learned to write code um, by writing a program called Hello World. Um, this dates back to the early 1970s at Bell Labs and kind of the early history of computing. Um, and to as a first program, it's like either practice or as a way of like showing the basics of a language, um, having this program print out the words hello world back to the programmer. So um, we're going to open up the P5JS editor and um, create a new sketch here. Um, you'll see that this um, stuff here shows up automatically. This is created by default by P5JS. Um, to help us, but we actually don't need all of this stuff. So I'm going to, um, in our next examples, we're going to be using this, but for now, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this create canvas line and this background line. Um, we'll talk more in a little bit about what this means um, and about setup and draw and all of that stuff. So, but for now, we can kind of ignore that as our basics. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and type one line of code. That's all we need for our program. Um, and we type console.log and then um, in print, um, quotation marks, we're going to say hello world. Now, there's a couple of important things to note, um, but before we do that, let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens. Again, this is one of the things I love about code is we can just try stuff, see what happens. You can't really break anything doing this. I mean, you can, but you're not going to hurt anything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click the run button up here and you'll notice nothing shows up in this preview window here because we haven't actually drawn anything on the screen. Um, but what we do see is down here at the bottom, the words hello world show up in the console down here. Um, so why don't you go ahead and add this to a sketch of your own, run it. And with that, you should have some at least small amount of satisfaction knowing that you've written your very first program in P5JS. Congrats, that's really exciting. Um, once you have that done, start the video back up and we'll talk about what's going on here. So um, a couple of things to note. One, or, you know, let's just like kind of look through here and, and talk about what are we seeing. And I think having kind of a critical exploratory eye is really helpful in understanding how programs work. So we see a couple of things. We see first this word console. And um, there's different commands for doing this um, printing of text in different programming languages. So if you switch to Java or C++ or Python, you're gonna see different commands for this. But in JavaScript, which P5JS is built on top of, um, you see this word console, and that is a pretty clear connection to the console down here. Actually, we can um, kind of highlight this. So this points to, <laughs> drawing a very long arrow, um, this points to, our console down in the bottom of the editor. And again, this is where error messages are gonna show up. And also where, like we're doing here, we can have text print um, or show up on the screen so that we can um, debug and see what's happening in our program. Then we have this dot log and the log command is actually what's doing this. So we're telling the console to please log or print or display this text. Um, then you'll notice that there's parentheses. There's one at the beginning and one at the end of the command. And we're going to see this a lot where uh, we create a command and inside the parentheses um, are something called an argument. And an argument is basically a set of parameters for this command. We're telling it what we want it to do. Um, for our case, you'll notice that it's some text that's in quotation marks. Uh, when we do things like draw a rectangle, this might be coordinates and dimensions. When we change color, it might be RGB values, other things like that. Um, you'll also notice that our um, text here is in quotation marks. And you can either in JavaScript do single quotes. So I could type hello world like this or uh, double quotes. Both of those will work. Um, it's kind of a preference thing. We may see later where um, you might want to choose one or the other depending on um, the particular text that you're drawing. Um, but really, it's kind of interchangeable and it's, it depends on just what you're comfortable with. Um, and so whatever is inside these quotation marks is what's going to be printed down to the console. And then there's one more really, really important piece, and that's the semicolon at the end. 
the semicolon tells uh, JavaScript, tells P5JS that this is the end of this command. Um, so I think a good way to think about um, programming languages is that it, they're just dumb robots. They're, they have no sense of context. They don't know anything. They just do exactly what you tell them to do. Um, and so it needs to know when is the end of this command. And to do that, we, we give it a semicolon. Now, to be honest, it's actually sort of uh, optional in JavaScript, but I think it's a good idea. It's gonna help prevent errors. And in a lot of other programming languages, it's totally not optional. So it's not a bad habit to get into. Um, so we have console tells it to point to this um, console down here in the bottom. Log is the, the actual command that's telling it to, to write that text. Then in parentheses, we have this argument um, that's a, a text that we want to print that's in either single or double quotes. And then the semicolon at the end tells it that's the end of the command. So that's a lot for one command, but all the other ones we're going to use basically follow a very similar kind of format. Um, so again, one of the really cool things we can do with code is just try changing stuff and see what happens. So um, instead of hello world, maybe I want to say hello web browser. And I can run this again. So I'm going to click the run button again. And you'll see now it prints hello web browser. So you can change that text. We can also make multiple console.log commands. So maybe I wanted to say you know, sort of like a conversation. Hello. Hi. How are you? And then if I run this, you'll see that it's printing it on three separate lines. So each command ends up on printing out to a different line. Um, later, we're going to see examples where we can use this again for like debugging. We can see what's happening inside your sketch. Maybe something is changing size or position or whatever, and you want kind of have a peek into what's happening. This can be a really useful thing for that. So that's the console.log command and hello world. Um, we're going to add one more thing though, really to make this a finished um, program. I mean, this is a very, very simple, obviously, example. Um, but we, as best practice, we want to include a little more information. We don't want just to have our program have no context. Um, and so a good way to do this is by adding comments. And comments are parts of your uh, code or what's written here that don't run. They don't execute. They don't do anything. They're really meant for you um, to be able to remember what's going on and for other people who are looking at your code to understand how your code works and to um, know who made it. And so I think at the top of every program we write, we should always include some of this kind of information. Um, and there's two ways that we can do comments in JavaScript. One is this slash slash. That's the one that's right by the um, question mark on your keyboard. And you'll notice it changes to gray. And the color of what we're seeing here are actually really helpful indicators of what's going on. So the gray tells me this is a comment. And then anything after that on this one line um, is a comment. So this is a comment. This is two. And so this, when I run it, is nothing is going to change. No, um, that information doesn't um, show up in the console. It's, it's kind of ignored by the computer. It's really for humans. Um, this is nice, but if we want <clears throat> a longer comment, we can do slash asterisk and then at the other end, asterisk slash. And so anything between these two symbols is going to be a comment. So we can have this go on multiple lines. And I think it's good habit to always include a title for your sketch, your name. I like to include a date. And then optionally would be a URL. <clears throat> and then, excuse me, and then um, some um, info about your program. So um, this is just basic stuff so that other people can see it. And honestly, I can promise you that um, if you even walk away for a few hours or a couple of days, you're going to have a hard time remembering how stuff is working, why you made certain decisions, all of that stuff. This is just as much for you as it is for everybody else. So I'm going to retitle this and you know whatever formatting works for you. Um, so I'm going to say, hello world. And you know, if you wanted to include um, a handle or an alias that you use online instead of your real name, that's cool. Um, the date doesn't have to be like the day 
it could be the month or just the year. So I'm going to put 2020 because it's 2020. Um, and then, you know, I might put my URL here, or you could put uh, GitHub if you have that so that people could find it. You could also include a much more specific link if you wanted to do that. And then obviously the info about the program, you can kind of fill in. There's one more way that we might wanna use comments and that would be within our code. So it doesn't just have to be up at the top. Um, so let's say I want to describe what's happening in this section. So I can say, um, or I wanna take notes for myself. So as you're working, you might wanna like be a reminder explaining something. So I might say, um, display text down in the console. So I can do it like that, where it says that's what's happening. I can also include a note after a command. So after that semicolon, I can have a comment and I could say, um, you know, um, text must be in quotes, single or double. So then this becomes a note next to that line of code and either way works um, and you'll see in the examples and there's quite a few if you go to um, the link that's on the github page for this section you'll see this drawing basic a link to this drawing basics collection within the p5.js editor and this um, is where you can view all the examples for this project so our first one here hello world um, includes a bunch of stuff, including some comments up at the top. So you can see here how I formatted that. Um, it's got some contextual information. Um, all of these examples are also gonna include challenges. So if you're feeling psyched and you wanna try something, um, this is a great way for you to, um, to expand what you're doing. And then in the examples, I've included um, uh, comments as a way of explaining what's going on or providing some kind of context. So you can see um, how that's being used here and kind of like, a real code example. So um, go ahead, if you haven't already, try creating some console.log commands, have it print in the console of the, um, of the editor, try changing things. If you get an error, I think that can be a really interesting thing as well. So actually before we move on to the next thing, let's try that. Cause I think errors are not a sign of um, doing something bad, but it's a chance for you to learn and understand what's going on. So let's say, for example, I don't have this in quotation marks. If I try to run this, it's going to show me this error here. And P5.js is going to do its best to try to help us out and tell us what's going on. Um, it is, and sometimes it does a better job than others. You know, it's, it's hard for it to know. Um, so here it's saying uncaught syntax error, um, expected token parentheses, sketch line 15. So that's kind of hard to understand what's going on here. Um, P5.js then tries to help you a little bit. It gives you some, some notes and stuff, but the most useful part is that it's guessing what line the error is. It highlights it. So we can, you know, imagine you have a, a program that's a hundred lines of code or, or bigger. It can be hard to figure out where that error is. This points you here. Now, what it doesn't tell you is that it should be in quotes. Um, it's just having a hard time. Uh, but at least this kind of gives us a starting point to be like, oh, I think I know what the problem here is. And so then we fixed it. So try running some of these, try adding some console.log. In the next example, um, you know, I know this isn't that exciting <laughs> as a first, uh, first program, but in our next example, we're actually going to start drawing some shapes, which will be really great. So, yep, see you there.